Hello guys, happy new year to everyone, health, love and money. I'm so sorry for this late post, but my wife got me a surprise trip for Christmas and I just came back a couple days ago. So this is the final part of my beginner car animation tutorial. The link to part 1 and part 2 will be in the description. And today we will create a beautiful city with people and city props, add some lights, some fog as well. Then I'll show you my render settings and how I deal with the composition in DaVinci Resolve. So at the end of this video, you will know exactly how to create an animation like this one. So let's start with the buildings just after this quick shout out. Hello everyone and welcome to the ride, my Blender car animation course created for beginners and intermediate users who want to get into car animation. I'm so proud to present this project. It's more than 64 videos and 11 hours of training and today I can finally share it with you. In this course, you are going to cover all the topics you need to master in order to create your own 3D projects, such as environment design, lighting, animation, camera animation, camera framing for TikTok, Instagram or YouTube short, smoke simulation, <laughs> DaVinci Resolve, sound effects, and the list goes on. I will also provide all the necessary assets that you need to follow along. My updated city pack with skyscrapers, city props, and 22 new buildings that you can use in all your animations. HDRI magic to create realistic animations in a few clicks, and with the collaboration of Ashworth Cars, 3D Shaker, and Zephyr 3D, you will also get this C63 AMG, this OD RS5, this Corvette C8, and this beautiful Mustang. Yes! Everything is included in this course. For the buildings, I'll show you two different options. For this version of the animation, I use a tool named Cargo. If you don't know, Cargo is a tool that lets you import assets in your scene. And we are talking about 10,000 models and materials. And not any random models, those are professional assets used in TV shows and movies like Doctor Strange, Last of Us, Star Trek, just to name a few. I made a complete video on how to use Cargo, so if you want to check, the link will be in the description. Cargo is a subscription base, so maybe you're not there yet, maybe you're just starting your Blender journey, or you simply don't have the need for such a tool. In that case, let me show you an alternative for creating the city. As I told you in part 1, it's not a modeling tutorial, and I don't want it to be too long, so I decided to just give you some assets so you can follow along. Five buildings, two skyscrapers, and some city props to decorate your sidewalks. For your information, those assets are coming from my city pack, the link will be in the description. If you have a slow computer or you need background objects for your animations and stills, my city pack is perfect for that. You will have tons of buildings, skyscrapers, street decorations for your project. So if you like my work or you want to support the channel, that would be a great way to do so. Before we start placing the buildings, let's reorganize our workspace. So here, you move your mouse in this corner until you have this crosshair and you split the screen like this and you do it one more time. So you move the mouse here and one more time here. In this window, I would like to have my camera view. So I press zero on the numpad and N to hide those tabs and the same to add those tools, I press a T on my keyboard. I don't want to display all those information. So here, you raise the size of your window until you have those little icons and you untick them. And the idea is to have a clean window for your camera view. So we can see exactly what's happening. For this window, I will select the uh, asset browser and I will explain why in a few seconds. So you open the file with my free buildings or you use my city pack or whatever you have available. And for your information, if you're using the free buildings I just gave you, you just have to copy and paste them into your scene. Me, I will just use my city pack. This is why I wanted to have this window on the asset browser. So here I select a GYB a city pack and I click on buildings to access the buildings. Once again, if you don't have my city pack, don't worry, just copy and paste the assets I just gave you to follow along. And to keep things organized, let's create some collections. So right click new collection and this one, for example, I will name it R, like right buildings. And let's create another one, new collection for L buildings. Let's start with the right buildings. So I click on this collection. I select a building in my pack and I just drag and drop it in my scene. Let's change the rotation for this one, 90 degrees. And I selected the facade tip building on purpose. So it's not looking good in our camera. 
but I still want to use it. So to fix that, you select a full building, this one for example, and you just put it behind the facade, something like that. And if needed, you can duplicate it with Alt D, G and Z, and you just raise it, and voila. Now you have a beautiful building in your scene. Let's place another building, for example, this one. And I will rotate it as well. And this is just how I created this street. You just repeat this process until you have something you like. Now some tips for your building placements. To duplicate a building, use Alt D and not Shift D. It will consume less resources. When you're using facades, you should really avoid those holes. It's not a good looking and two ways to do so. Just duplicate the building with Alt D. So Alt D, G and Z and voila or you just use a full building behind it. So for example, this one, Alt D, and now you have a full building. You can duplicate a full building as well, so it seems that you have a new asset, Alt D and G and Z. So now it seems that you have a taller building. To give more interest to your scene, don't hesitate to change the depth of your environment so everything is not perfectly aligned. The more different buildings you use, the more interesting your scene will be. If you don't have my city pack, you can find free buildings everywhere on the web. For example, just type free buildings in cgtrader.com, you will have great options. Then, when you're happy with the result, you select all the buildings, so on your collection, right click, select objects, so that will select everything, and don't worry if your collection doesn't have the same name, Alt D to duplicate, G and X to move on the X axis, and then R and Z, and you can press Ctrl in order to increment 5 degrees by 5 degrees, just to be sure that it's aligned. Then you place your buildings wherever you want. And thanks to the rotation, you will not have symmetrical buildings on each side. It will look like you created a brand new buildings line. Once you finish, you press M to move all those buildings to the left side. Or this one. I already did that, so I will not do it again. Let's check the animation. Yeah, sexy. For the city props, I just click on the city props in my city pack and you just drop a lot of stuff on the sidewalks. The more you have on your sidewalks, the better it will look in the final animation. So don't hesitate to load those bad boys with a lot of stuff. If you don't have my city pack, just do as we did before. You go in cgtrader.com for example or sketchfab or whatever and you type free city props and once again you will have great options to decorate your sidewalks. Then for the people, I did use this free pack on sketchfab. The link will be in the description. You just download the file and you copy paste the objects in your scene. If you copy those people in your scene and they are too big, just change their dimensions to have the Z around 1.8 meters. One important parameter you have to set for the lights, you go here in a world, in a surface, and be sure that the strength is set to zero. So you will have a pure black in your scene and we are sure that it's only our lights that will light the city street. And now let me show you my lights configuration. For the main source, I did use those street lamps and I will put them for free in uh, the file. Those uh, street lamps are coming from my city pack as well. For the light itself, I use a value of 100 watt. Then all you have to do is to duplicate those uh, street lamps on each side of the sidewalks. Just place them roughly the way I did until the end of the road. Then for the building's lights, I did use this pack, you just type free neon on CG Trader. I will put the link in the description. And here I downloaded this pack. And this is what I use everywhere on the different buildings. You just copy and paste them in your scene and scale and move them all around to fill your scene. And because you have this camera window open, you will see the influence of those lights in your scene. And like the sidewalks, don't hesitate to load them everywhere on the buildings to give life to your city street. Now let me show you an easy way to create some fog, so some sexiness in your scene. You press Shift A on your keyboard and Mesh and Cube and you scale this cube with S, something like that. And the idea is you put this cube on your road and you scale it, for example first the Y, in order to cover entirely your road, so G and Y and... Let me go to frame one. Be sure to have your camera inside the fog. That's not mandatory, but it's better for the visualization. And once you finish with the Y, you can do the same with the X. If you want your buildings to be in the fog as well. And for the ground, you don't need your box to go in the ground. So G and Z. 
and just move it just below the ground if you want. With the cube selected, you go in object and viewport display. And here, display as, you select wire. In this window now, we are going to go in the shader editor. So here, shader editor, and press new to give a new texture to this road. You delete the principal BSDF, shift A, search, you search for volume. And you can use the volume scatter and you plug this to the volume. And let me show you the result here. So I will go in render view. We can't see anything because the fog is too dense. So let's go for 0.01. Now it's way better. From there, it's just a matter of taste. I think I went for 0.05. But once again, it's up to you. This fog step is not mandatory at all. It's just giving some depth to your animation. And you can use any values. You just check your image and see what you like. Now for my render settings, of course, I use cycles and the GPU. For the samplings in the viewport, because I want it to be fast, I use 512. And for the render, I use 2048. But if you don't have a powerful GPU, you don't have to use this value because it can be long. You can use 1000 or 500. It will be perfectly fine. Just check the image and see if you like it. For the denoise, because I have a 1490, I use optics and albedo and normal. For the output, I just use PNG, RGBA, and color depth to 8-bit. That's enough for my case. And just to give you a rough idea, it took me around 2 minutes and 22 seconds to render one image with my 1490 and 2048 samples. So I really recommend that you lower the samples if you find that your render times are too long. Then when you have all your images, you just select everything, Control A, and you drag and drop them in DaVinci Resolve, which is a free editing software, and boom, you will have your animation. When you drag your images in DaVinci Resolve, if it's not recognized as an image sequence, just go here in Media, you click on those three dots, Frame Display Mode, and you select Sequence. After that, it will recognize your images as a sequence. Then for the grading, you just click on your clip and you go here in grading and nothing fancy. I just erase the gain a little bit. And as usual, I just use my film convert filters to add the grading automatically and to add some grain. If you want more details about this process, don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section. And to add some glow to the scene, you just select your clip. You go here in fusion, shift the tab, you search for glow. This one, and for the glow, I did use a blend of 0.04 because the default value of 1 is way too high. Hey, that's it guys, my beginner tutorial is now over. Don't hesitate if you have questions. Thank you for watching, I talk to you soon, bye bye.